Hi, my name is Pamela Fuseli, and I'm the host of Popping the Bubble Wrap. Are you the person in your family who worries about the safety of others, about buying safety products and using them? Are you yelling, yes, that's me? Then this is the podcast for you. Raising a child or children can be a hair-raising undertaking, and keeping them safe is your priority. Parachute's Popping the Bubble Wrap podcast explores what you really need to think about and provides easy tips on prevention strategies. No bubble wrap here, though. Ever wonder what the warranty card is for, if you should fill it out and send it back? Would you be surprised to learn that not every product you buy has already been tested for safety? And what are those age recommendations on toys actually for? Today, we're diving into the sometimes confusing world of consumer product safety, standards and recalls, like where to find information on how to report an issue as they relate to child products. Joining us today for the conversation are parents Matt Amar and Jen Ferrant, as well as our expert Kavinda Sainanayaka, Inspector, Consumer Product Safety Program, Health Canada. Okay, first off, let's be honest. Have you filled out that warranty card, Jen and Matt? Have you even ever looked at it? Jen, maybe I'll start with you. I always fill out the warranty card because I'm always afraid if it comes to like, I don't even think about recalls necessarily. I always Mm -hmm. think about uh, like whether, you know, if something was to break down before the warranty was up. So it's one of those things I kind of do. But I know that that's not the norm. (laughs) Matt, how about you? I think I've maybe done it once. (laughs) Um, I'm thinking about the uh, probably the stove. Like we recently bought like a new stove microwave and that one, I was like, okay, I'm doing it for this one. But I would say every other time I just kind (laughs) of, I think about it sometimes, but I I usually never do it now. No, you know, you're not alone. I'm pretty sure. Uh, So when you look for products, when you're buying products and toys, cribs, you know, anything like that, car seats, even, where do you buy them? Do you buy them in the stores primarily? Do you buy, do you shop a lot online? Um, Jen? I have made it my life's mission to spend as little as humanly possible on my young child. I have an almost four-year-old and it's not that I don't love her. It's just that they go through things so quickly and, you know, you spend money on a cute, you know, outfit or a toy or something. And, you know, it fits them for two weeks, or they play with it for a day, and then it's kind of done. And so I have done a lot of shopping on Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji. Uh, I run my local buy nothing group, which is one place uh, where, you know, neighbors kind of post things that they're looking to get rid of, and you can ask for it. Um, So a lot of what we have, I would say, 90% of the things that we have in our house for our daughter were previously owned by someone else. So that's things like, like toys, obviously, you know, you mentioned clothes, furniture, yeah, um, you know, things uh, like cups and plates we've got from, you know, neighbors or, um, uh, you know, off the the buy nothing group. Um, Yeah, basically, (laughs) almost anything that isn't like, I would say, I'll I'll use the word not even hygienic necessarily, because I even had like secondhand cloth diapers. Um, mm. But really, the the new stuff we get are things that people gift her for Christmas or for uh, birthdays and that kind of a thing. But anything that we purchase generally outside of like a special thing here and there is uh, something that's been previously owned. Mm-hmm. Well, and you make a good point. They grow out of it so quickly that, uh, you know, there's there's still a lot of life left in a lot in those products that other people could use. And I mean, you look at the the environmental impact of the mm-hmm. consumerism of buying new things all the time, uh, the just the general cost of living these days compared to and with the cost of, you know, raising a young kid and then and then they they get something new and it doesn't work for them or they don't like it or they they turn around and it's not the hot toy anymore. And I just wonder, mm-hmm. you know, is it worth it? Mm hmm. Matt, how about you? Uh, store? Do you buy a lot of, of of store things? Do you get hand me downs or you know borrow things from other other friends that have had children maybe a little bit older than yours? 
Well, first, I'm going to say I'm in awe of Jen. I, I, the toys are the vein of my existence, as I think any new parent. And, and it's just like, you know, it's just endless, right? Like, there's so many things that you have to buy, especially when they're young. And we, we did, a, I, I think, a little bit of everything. My mm-hmm. wife did most of the purchasing. Like, that was totally her bag. Um, I would say second we we went more secondhand for some of the bigger items like mm-hmm. structural pieces like his dresser wardrobe and crib uh and then my wife's an interior designer so she would basically like you know kind of re- remodel them a bit paint them she'd even build some additions on them cause she's really handy with um with the wood making and all that stuff so um those pieces i think we probably got off kijiji um mm-hmm. and um Definitely stuff from the store, for sure. Uh, a lot of stuff online. I would say the majority of his things in the early days were bought online. Things, uh, you know, things locally, things from China, like just wherever, right? Um, so uh, I, I would say we we didn't do too. We we probably should, we probably could have done more secondhand stuff in the beginning, the, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, but then now it's a lot of stuff is being brought to us through like jen said like with parties and uh, birthdays and christmas and a lot of the right. new toys now are, are, are things yeah because he's he's also getting older too my son's four so he's he's not necessarily playing with the types of things that he was when he was you know, yeah tall like a baby is safety top of mind i would imagine it is but you know what are the things that you check when you do buy the products um secondhand matt like what are you looking for obviously you know that they work but are there other things that you Mm. look for and do you ever check for recalls things like that i would say i'm not proactively checking for recalls Mm -hmm. um unless unless there's like some kind of you know, I probably would check for a recall if something happened. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like if there's some kind of malfunction with the toy or something, like, oh, is this a problem? Like other people need to know about this. The recall would be me more going that route. Um, but when we're bringing things in secondhand, I'm I'm definitely considering safety. I mean, among all the other things, right? The just the the general aesthetic of it, just how functional it is. I'm a very mm-hmm. functional kind of person. My wife's very design. Like mm-hmm. she's, you know we kind of we, we kind of have these fun fights over that air hey, like i'm like well does it work is it does it hold up what if he shakes it here let me shake it you know like <laughs> i'm the guy doing that so i'm definitely looking at at just the safety and like the the crib's a good example because he's we have we have a boy he's been 99th percentile for height and weight pretty much like all the way through and we're like hey like he's gonna he's gonna climb out of this crib like you know, is this, is this crib or, or like, even he would wrench on the bars. I remember like, mm-hmm. uh, he, he would pull the bars and he'd shake it. Like, uh, I don't know if any of your listeners uh, used to watch wrestling, but the ultimate warrior, when he used to shake the ropes, that was him with the bars and the cribs. And, and I was like, is this thing going to hold up? Is he going to tear the house down? And, and so like, I would have those kind of concerns, right. Where it's like, Oh, maybe we need to like reinforce this or, you know, mm-hmm. but like, luckily my wife built it pretty structurally sound and then the molding she put on it which i was like oh i don't know is he what if he gets his fingers in there that actually that actually prevented him from getting out because he was able to climb uh pretty well right so that was another concern of mine right is is he is he gonna be safe in this crib and especially as Mm -hmm. he gets more adventuresome and, and physically capable but yeah yeah and jen i mean when you're looking at you know buying you know, secondhand or, or, or through, you know, your group, you know, you're not going to have all that information on the product. So, you know, you must do some Google searching. Uh, I love that uh, Google search on uh, using, using an image that's, that's even better than trying to type in a description of what the item is. Yeah, it's tough when you're buying stuff online, because and I sell stuff online. So I, I know uh, the difficulty sometimes of locking down a sale. And, you know, it's tough because if it's something you're honestly interested in, sometimes asking those kind of more specific questions like, oh, can you give me the make and model? Or do you know what year this was manufactured? Or, you know, any of those kind of clarifying questions, which could really help narrow down a, po- a product recall. Sometimes that's the difference between you getting the product or not, because if you're too much work mm-hmm. as a buyer, the seller is going to move on to the next person, even if they're offering $5 less, because, you know, so 
personally, like I, I haven't, and maybe I'm speaking out of just, I don't think it's ignorance necessarily, but because I've never had anything bad happen yet, mm-hmm. uh, I, I haven't been as clairvoyant, I guess. I haven't really been looking for it the way that uh, I probably should have been. Um, but I, I mean, that's not to say as an example in the, the buy nothing group, how sometimes I'll bring something home and it'll just not be right you know you'll pick something up Mm -hmm. and people are generally pretty transparent about the quality of items you know they'll let you know uh you know this toy is missing a battery cover or it's whatever uh and sometimes you'll pick something up and go yeah this isn't the risk i'm willing to take and then you can either choose to re-gift it or you know just get rid of it because you think it's kind of a larger safety issue Mm -hmm. um yeah kavinda Parents are often looking to save money and and reuse products. Having a child is expensive, as as Jen and Matt have have talked about. And so borrowing from family, from friends, looking in thrift stores or online. What are some of the considerations that parents might not think about when they're doing that, when they're borrowing or purchasing secondhand items or even, you know, online that may come from outside of the Canadian borders because there are some products that are for sale that you can buy but are not legal to sell in Canada. I recently was on Facebook Marketplace. Somebody was selling Baby Walker with wheels and that's illegal to sell in Canada, whether that's not secondhand or secondhand. So what, you know, what are the, some of the things that you, you want to share with, with parents? I mean, there's a lot of things you have to consider when you're borrowing or purchasing products secondhand in Canada. I think the first the first and foremost, you have to be vig- vigilant as a shopper, as a parent. You know, you always have to be making sure that you're doing that extra check, uh, making sure things are still good quality. I love what Jen was saying about, you know, checking that button battery covers are still there. You know, that's something mm-hmm. new products, new toys need to have proper compartments with a screw so that children can't kind of break open the compartment and get access to the battery, which is obviously a big hazard. So going secondhand, getting things that are borrowed, you just have to take that extra step to make sure it's not been worn down. Parts are missing, exposed wiring, for example. So that's something that you as the purchaser um, kind of have to take on, take on that responsibility. Now, traditional secondhand stores do actually follow the same rules as a retailer. So mm. a, a traditional secondhand store um would have to make sure that all the products that they're selling should be compliant to the regulation, that there are no prohibited products like you're talking about, Pam. But mm. there are individual sellers, and that's one thing you have people have to keep in mind is that you know individual sellers or people or products that you've purchased from outside of Canada don't always fall are sort of outside the jurisdiction of what Health Canada can deal with. Mm. So in that case, again, you as you have to be vigilant as the uh, as the consumer, um, we also recommend that there are a lot of resources through the Government of Canada's website, through uh, Canada.ca, where you can find information about various types of products that you can buy um, secondhand. Uh, I'll also plug that there is a recalls and safety alerts database, uh, and that's where you as a parent or as a consumer generally can get updated updates on recalls, safety alerts, and advisories that are being posted by Health Canada, and you can subscribe to it. So on a daily basis or when every new alert gets posted, you get an email uh, telling you about what's going on. And that's important because, A, especially older products, not all, I mean, it, it can be across the board, but products that are a bit older sometimes may have been part of a recall, but, you know, it doesn't get carried in the news cycle anymore. So you have to be a bit more diligent in terms of searching that up, um, but also Again, you never know when a product uh, has an issue and it'll tell you what to do. And sorry, the recall or safety alert would tell you what to do in the event you had the product. And that's where that warranty card comes into play, right? If you've actually sent back the warranty card, the manufacturer um, will notify you. That's a, a mechanism that they can get in touch with people who have bought their product, right? Well, yeah, and that I think that also touches on something very important that we kind of always stressed with products is that the manufacturer is in the end the most responsible for the product and the expert of their product so you know when in doubt when you have questions when you're unsure about the if there's additional instructions or safe use uh, warnings or with the product certainly to contact the manufacturer go on their website you know a lot of times there's additional information there um, and certainly if you have questions about a specific product or, you know how to use it is it 
if the warranty still exists, especially for older mm-hmm. products, certainly mm-hmm. contacting the manufacturer is a good step. Great. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment. Nearly three decades ago, Amazon set out to be Earth's most consumer-centric company, where people can discover and purchase the widest possible selection of safe and authentic goods. As part of that mission, they obsess over earning and maintaining trust by ensuring that they provide a trustworthy shopping experience. Amazon is dedicated to helping you make informed choices and use your purchases safely. Visit www.amazon.ca slash product safety and usage and explore expert tips, articles, and videos from our partners to ensure a secure shopping experience. So before the break, we were talking about secondhand products um, or, you know, reusing products. Maybe that's a, a, another way to think about it. Jen, you've come across, a, you know, product for your child that you maybe felt was unsafe, or maybe, maybe even you've questioned if it's the right product for you. Do you check for things like uh, age range recommendations when you when you purchase products. I know some of them won't have the original box and things like that. But what do you kind of check for when you look at, uh, you know, for those the safety of the product? It's a really good question. I do I do occasionally check for the age range. Although I find, I mean. Obviously, the age ranges are there for a reason. Personally, I have always taken more of the approach of really knowing my kid, knowing mm-hmm. her limitations. She was never one, and I'm going to say this in touch wood because <laughs> she's only four, but she was never really one to put stuff in her mouth that wasn't supposed to go in her mouth, you know, when you during that, like, you know, the, the high choking risk kind of time. Um, I mean, obviously, I wasn't giving her the, the smaller items, but I always mm-hmm. found, uh, you know, there was there is a little bit of discrepancy between maybe the posted age range and what I assess her ability and interest at. So it's kind of been a bit of a give and take, and it really is product dependent and uh, dependent on her. We also make sure that she's supervised. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you know, if there is a new product, uh, you know, she has been a fan of Hot Wheels cars. This kid is a car obsessed from the time she was really young. Um, And so, you know, making sure that while these don't have small parts, they have the ability to break into small parts. You know, she's supervised while she's going to be playing with them. And that kind of was how we mitigated some of the maybe fudging the age range recommendations Mm -hmm. a little bit is just making sure that the the parental supervision piece is there while she's playing with it. Yeah, that's Good advice. And um, Matt, you talked about your son being, you know, at the 99th percentile, you know, that is an, uh, a consideration, both from the their physical size, but also obviously their their cognitive uh, ability. Um, and you talked about, you know, sharing products or passing along products. Maybe you can talk about the questions that you you might have around, you know, what, what do you do if you have something that you want to share with friends and family because the product is still, you know, visibly usable. Yeah. Like I, I always kind of want to see it first because like, there were mm. people who even offered, I think to have my son, um, you know, Oh, we got this like motorized ATV thing or, you know, this is like, he's too young for that. And like, they're trying to do a, a nice thing. And I'm just like, I don't trust him enough yet. We're on a busy road. Like we don't play in the front. He's too young. It's more backyard. So um, I think it's like a lot of times they have like if we're giving or receiving things like you, you got to take a look at it. And then like Jen said, you got to know your child. Right. So age range is like it's useful for some things. But mm-hmm. for for my son, I was more interested in like what are the height and weight recommendations here? Like for the jolly jumper, that was a one that was you know the a very specific time they're ready for that right and we tried him a little bit too early in at once um and when i say a little too early he just wasn't like confident in his abilities to do it yet and he got a little freaked out and he was just like crying he didn't want to do it and then we're like it's okay we'll we'll, we'll try again and, and he just needed a bit of time but he was mm-hmm. able to get into that thing a little bit earlier than the average kid i'm sure and then he loved it when he was actually doing it. But again, like mm-hmm. Jen said, never letting him use things unsupervised. And and so right. 
Um, yeah, so we definitely, definitely kind of go. And then same thing with the choking, right? Like he's, he was using things that were technically considered choking hazards a bit younger than say the average kid, because he just never showed that he was mm. putting things in his mouth. And then we were, and then we'd be there with him for those things. Like, especially at that, like younger age, you're always with right. him, but, um, but yeah, so if I'm, and, and we're getting to a point now where like my, like other people are starting to have kids and we have a lot of stuff that we're ready to give away. So I think those right. are some of the considerations that I would mm-hmm. pass along. You know, I, I'd pass along some of this, my own thoughts. And then I, you know, my own assessment of, of the safety implications and all that. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think you I, both I haven't put anything on marketplace, anything yet. <laughs> you haven't gone down that yeah. road yet. <laughs> I think no, you guys make yet, a really yeah. you guys make a really good point about knowing your child. Like there's guidelines around the age and you know when they can be used, but also knowing your child is really important. Um, Kevin, you know, just to wrap this up, you know, if if somebody is looking, you know, that's great information what you shared about push notifications about recalls. What are the kinds of things that parents should report to Health Canada if they have an incident with a product? So on Canada.ca, through the government, through Health Canada, there is a form where you can mm-hmm. report incidents in, or safety concerns involving consumer products or cosmetics. And that form is sort of a way for Health Canada to be notified that there is a potential risk or a hazard existing with a product. And it's our way to then follow up with companies kind of to understand if there is a bit greater risk to Canadians. Again, I think I just want to echo a lot of what Jen and Matt have touched on is, you know, being vigilant as parents, you know, constantly being making sure that you're kind of seeing uh, what the different types of products are that they're interacting with, you know, ag- agreed that there's there's a lot of uh, recommendations and I certainly always recommend going by the manufacturer's instructions when it comes to using a product. But again, you understand how your child interacts with these products and that might change how you may want to approach using that and creating a safe environment for your children. Right. So, you know, when in doubt, if you have a experience with a product that you're concerned about, don't hesitate to contact Health Canada, report it through the form. Because if you see trends, then you can see, you know, if it's one incident versus a handful of incidents that, you know, sort of triggers a, a review. So I think that's an important message for parents as well. Matt, Jen, Kavinda, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. We could probably talk for another half an hour on consumer products and all the different ins and outs, but I really appreciate the time you've taken um, to come and talk to me today on the podcast. Thanks for having Thanks, us. Thanks, Pam. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. Popping the Bubble Wrap is a podcast of Parachute, Canada's national injury prevention charity. We release episodes monthly. Visit us at Parachute.ca and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Parachute Canada. Don't keep us a secret though. Help other parents find this podcast by sharing the link to popping the bubble wrap and taking a second to submit a review. It really does help. Popping the bubble wrap is produced by Story Studio Network.